It is 217 BC, a century after the death of Alexander the Great. His successors still vie for dominance over the once prosperous empire. Over the past three years, the Seleucid king Antiochus III has pushed through Syria. Ptolemy IV has gathered an army of natives in an effort to meet him at Raphia. With the country in crisis, he knows that defeat at Raphia would mean the end of his dynasty in Egypt. Ptolemy's army consists of a large and varied force of 6,000 men. However, Ptolemy's Atlas elephants are panicked by the larger Indian breed commanded by Antiochus. They will not bear being close to them in the coming battle. Ptolemy must be victorious at Raphia, or his kingdom will surely fall. Antiochus advances with an army of 7,000 men, consisting mainly of experienced soldiers and heavy piped phalanx infantry. Ptolemy orders his army into a defensive formation, with the pike infantry stationed at the front, the skirmishers at the rear, and the cavalry on each flank. Whoever can win the fight on the flanks will gain a massive advantage, and surely win the battle. Ptolemy hides his heavy chariots way off in the distance to maneuver a flank once both armies have engaged. Keeping his elephants at the back is to use them later on in the battle. Ptolemy's front line forms a pike phalanx to deter a head-on charge from the Seleucid elephants and cavalry. Antiochus orders his cavalry to charge the right and left flanks of the Egyptian army. Ptolemy orders his cavalry to meet them head-on. Both armies engage on the main line with pike phalanxes. Met by a skirmish battle in the middle of the battlefield. Seleucid skirmishers focus their fire on the main and back lines of Ptolemy's army. Thus, weakening the center will cause Ptolemy's army to crumble. The cavalry battle persists on the flanks, with Ptolemy's cavalry gaining the upper hand.
the Egyptian peltasts focus fire on the Seleucid elephants. Ptolemy's main line is taking heavy casualties from Antiochus's skirmishes. He must act swiftly to deal with the threat. Ptolemy orders his heavy chariots to begin flanking the engaged Seleucid army. Their objective is to attack the skirmishes, giving Ptolemy's army the upper hand. The Egyptian peltasts fire solely on the heavy Seleucid elephants, bringing them down one by one. Ptolemy's camel archers rain arrows down on Antiochus's engaged cavalry, making him an easy target. Antiochus's large elephants make an easy target for arrows and javelins and are brought down. The Egyptian second line of infantry advances to support the main line. The more experienced heavily armored silver shield pikemen of Seleucid are winning the fight on the main line against Ptolemy's lighter armored less experienced pikemen. Ptolemy must win the flanks if he is to save his main line from crumbling. Antiochus' cavalry are losing the fight for the flanks as Ptolemy himself fights alongside his cavalry soldiers to try and turn the battle in his favor. The Seleucids are winning the battle on the main line, with their more experienced men. Ptolemy must rout the remaining Seleucid cavalry soon before the Egyptian main line falls. He 
orders his camel riders to rear charge Antiochus's remaining cavalry. The camels are a larger and more aggressive breed of animal than their horse opposition, scaring the Seleucid cavalry thus rooting them from the battlefield. With Antiochus's cavalry defeated, Ptolemy controls the flanks and orders his cavalry to flank the Seleucid main infantry line. Ptolemy's fresh elephants also join the cavalry and begin to rear charge the Seleucids. Ptolemy's heavy chariots swoop in and cut down the Seleucid skirmishers and rout them from the battlefield. The tide of the battle changes in favor of Ptolemy. The Seleucids begin to suffer heavy losses. Between the Egyptian elephants, camel and cavalry rear charges the Seleucid men begin the tire and rout. Antiochus merely escapes with his own life. In an attempt to save his army he orders his remaining army to retreat and regroup. The day belongs to Ptolemy's Egypt. 